Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hide, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, uh, and welcome back to the Baseball Hide 2. Hope you like this video, hit that subscribe button, we're going to go through a whole bunch of rumors here for you, and hopefully you'll like it and you'll subscribe. I try to get the best information out there for you on this particular channel, this channel is kind of an eclectic thing, I'll do a lot of different things here, but here we go, from SI.com. Ray's Slugger reportedly available. Red Sox are logical trade partners. Boston needs an impact right-handed bat. If the Boston Red Sox fill their need for an impact right-handed bat by trading within the American League East. Boston has shown unwillingness to spend this offseason after whiffing on free agent target Oscar Hernandez who signed a mildly lucrative one-year deal with the LA Dodgers. Budgetary expectations have never been lower. Red Sox Chief Baseball Officer Craig Breslow reportedly has serious interest in outfielder designated hitter Jorge Soler, but would likely have to lowball him and then trade closer Kenley Jansen or possibly even Masataka Yoshida to meet owners' demands. With that in mind, it might make sense for Breslow to make a move for an affordable but impactful bat that will allow for financial flexibility elsewhere, such as Boston's search for another starting pitcher. Rays, according to sources, also have been shopping designated hitter Harold Ramirez, which I'll have a little more information on him, whose OPS plus the past two seasons is 21% above the average. The, munch, the Athletics munchkin Ken Rosenthal wrote Monday, and will be trading with projects Ramirez to earn $4.4 million in arbitration next season. Ramirez had 313 with 33 extra base hits, including 12 homers and 68 RBIs, and 813 OPS in 122 games for the Rays last season. His previous season was nearly identical. The 29 year old will not provide the power that Red Sox likely are seeking, but his career 17.8% strikeout rate and ability to get on base would resemble what Justin Turner brought to the lineup last season. Ramirez has two more seasons of team control and might be the cheapest overall option in terms of both prospect capital and actual cost. They could provide a 120 or higher OPS plus next season. For this move to make sense, the Red Sox would have to acquire a legitimate frontline starter via trade or free agency. Otherwise, it's not worth trading prospects to upgrade a roster that they are, willing, that they are not trying to compete with. Now, let me give you a little information on the Rays, at least from the Rays' perspective. It's from MLBTradeRumors.com. Rays shopping Harold Ramirez. As is typical for the Rays in a given offseason, they've been active on the trade market so far in 2023-2024. Tampa Bay has shipped out Tyler Glasnow, Manuel Margot, Luke Rayleigh, Angel Kittredge, Fidel Brujan, and Calvin Falker, and a quartet of deals, and then likely not finished. The Munchkin Ken Rosendahl of the Athletic reports that the Rays have been shopping first baseman left fielder designated hitter Howard Ramirez to clubs in need of a right-handed bat. The Rays' willingness to trade Ramirez isn't necessarily new or surprising. He stood as a logical trade candidate coming into the winter given his projected $4.4 million salary in arbitration, according to MLB Trade Rumors, and doing the link club control. Ramirez has just two years of club control remaining and limited defensive value. And Tampa Bay has regularly proven willing to trade bats fitting that description over the, over the years. Mark Topkin of the Tampa Bay Times reported back in November that the Rays had explored trade scenarios involving Ramirez leading into the non-tender deadline. Still, it's notable to see Rosendahl suggest that talks are gone going and suggest that the Rays themselves have initiated at least some of them. Ramirez, who's 29th out of minor league options, although his recent track record in the big leagues should leave him in no danger of being sent down anyhow. Since being acquired from the Cubs in a trade sending Esteban Juarez back to Chicago, he's tallied 869 plate appearances and turned in a 306, 432 slugging percentage with 18 homers, 43 doubles, a pair of triples, and 8 steals. Ramirez hasn't walked much in that time, but has a lower than average strikeout rate. Of course, some of that stems from the Rays' aggressive utilization of platoon setups. Ramirez has more than held his own against righties both with the Rays and in his career. However, the overwhelming bulk of his damage has come when he's feasted against left-handed pitching. The Rays gave Ramirez a combined 401, 401 innings 
between first and the outfield corners in 2022. We cut that already small total to a tiny 117 innings in 2023. It's clear the organization is wholly enamored of his defensive aptitude, but there's also little doubt that Ramirez can flat out hit. He has more gap power than true home run pop, but any team in search of running a bat would figure to be intrigued by the possibility of plugging Ramirez into at least a part time role. Depending on the fit, he could, provide, he could profile as an everyday option for a team without a set option at designated hitter, and there's some flexibility at first and in the outfield corners. The deadline for teams and players exchange arbitration figures is the, this coming Friday. That's hardly a set deadline for mo- to move arbitration eligible players, but it has also at times served as a, for some movement on the trade market for such players. Move Ramirez could create some extra opportunities for the la- latest wave of talented young Rays hitters, a group including the likes of Curtis Mead, Jonathan Aranda, and top prospect Junior Caminero. From a play role vantage point, moving Ramirez would drop Tampa Bay's projected opening day mark of south of $90 million, creating additional room to pursue help at other areas of need and free agency. And finally in this video, we're going to talk about a team we've not talked about on this channel, and that's the Colorado Rockies. Yes, there is a team in Colorado, in the mountains, in the middle of nowhere. I think people sort of forgot about them. I know the, the ownership has. This is from MLBTradeRumors.com. Headline, Rockies looking for left-handed hitting outfielder. The Rockies deepened their rotation and catching core late last week with signings of Dakota Hudson and Jacob Stallings. I know I've been thinking about this that all weekend. And their next move could be of similar scope in the outfield. Thomas Harding of MLB.com reports that the, the, Rocks, the Rockies are looking for a depth outfielder, ideally someone who can handle all three outfield positions while hitting from the left side of the dish. As things stand, the Rockies have a largely right-handed outfield mix. Left fielder Nolan Jones bats left-handed, but each of Brenton Doyle, Sean Bouchard, and Hunter Goodman is, is right-handed. As are the bulk of the team's upper minors options, with the notable exception of top organizational prospect Zach Veen and Yanquiel Hernandez. Though both are likely more than a year from the major still, Colorado resigned franchise stalwart Charlie Blackman earlier in the offseason, but he's expected to reprise his role as the team's primary DH in 2024. Adding some outfield depth from the left side makes a good bet of sense then although the free agent market is pretty light. It will be a shock to see the Rockies spend at the levels necessary to sign Cody Bellinger, and the options behind, beyond him aren't exactly plentiful. Joe Legallo would make an interesting upside player course field, but his production has been in free fall since the 2021 trade, sending him from Texas to the Bronx. He's not been the same since, it means he's almost been like shell-shocked since he went to the, up to the Yankees. Travis Jankowski and old friends Remy Altapia and Rafael Ortega could make sense, with the latter two in particular likely to be available on minor league contracts. Trade scenarios with this type of player are bound. There are too many to list in, is in full. Though reasonable on paper trade partners include the Royals, Kyle Isbell, Drew Waters, Mariners, Cade Marlowe, Taylor Trammell, Zach Deloach, and Tigers Akil Badu. It's also possible the Rocks could simply fill the need of a spring waiver claim or deal for an opt-out of options player who'd been squeezed out of a roster spot of his current team, for example, Nick Gordon or Jack Cave. The extent to which the Rockies can add to their payroll remains unclear. Colorado has added around $9 to $10 million in salary for offseason pickups of Hudson Stallings and Cal Quantrill. That said, the Rocks still appear headed toward a reduced budget for the 2024 season. They didn't lose much in the way of free agency, lefty Brent Sutter being their loan departure of note, but GM Bill, Bill Schmidt traded away veterans like CJ Crone, Randall Krychuk, Brad Hand, and Pierce Johnson at the deadline. That group combined to help push Colorado's 23 opening day payroll to a franchise record, $172 million. But they're com- currently about $30 million shy of that total. Like so many other clubs in MLB at the moment, 
The Rockies face ample uncertainty regarding their 2024 television broadcasts. And thus, their revenue AT&T Sportsnet, Rocky Mountain, the RSN, that previously broadcast the team's games, is, is ceasing operations in 2024. However, their broadcast situation plays out. It's quite likely to adversely impact the team's revenue. Couple that with the Rockies' extreme long shot postseason odds, and it's unsurprising though surely still frustrating for their fans. That the team has had a rather quiet offseason instead appears to be focusing on in-house development with an eye towards 2025 and beyond. So you let me know what you think about this video and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.